But Camille, when people come to see you and they and you've had a lot over the years, a lot of people that have gone through a lot of stuff. Yeah. It's not a one and done. I mean, you know, cancer doesn't go away in a day, but you're, you know, you're, you're people that you're loving on and helping. It's not one and done. Like, what is your process of helping them through well, trauma? Well, uh, honestly, I'm not afraid to hear anything, meaning whatever they're going through, I can hear it. And so if it's upset, if it's anger, if it's swearing, if it's whatever, it's like, let me hear it. So I, I'm gonna, I want to take that burden off of them and I want to, I want to, you know, carry it for them. Um, my whole intention is to help them ease their pain, right? So... I, I help them see what is. It, this is what it is. And so there's no no, go, no goofing, no messing. Um, this is serious. It is what it is. And so let's face it together. Let's talk about it. What's the worst? What's the best? You know, do you need to process that? Do you need to look in the future? Or do you need to just experience it right here, right now? Yeah. Um, a lot of things are in the past that were traumatic for people. A lot of people don't want to relive that. They're mm-hmm. like, I don't want to bring that up. I don't want to talk about that. But I can see a pattern in their life because when they were went through a betrayal or uh, illness or someone passed away, they decided something about life or about themselves or about love. And that's really re- reliving. They're reliving that moment all the time. So unless they're going to process that and, and look at how they created it somewhere, they won't they won't stop the cycle. They'll continue to be in that cycle. I love that you used- you use the word process is really yeah. that that's what it is yes. or, or even a clearing a clearing to me clearing, is like yeah. let's just let's clean that out you know and yeah. and and to to your point you know um we can change our thoughts we can change our attitude we can change all of that but if it becomes a band-aid and you're really not getting down to the why yeah of why you feel a certain way or why these patterns are happening or why you're reacting, something like that. Mm-hmm. The you're real not going to get better. No. It doesn't get better. You just find more excuses or justifications of either why this is happening or why you feel a certain way. And I know like with me, with cancer, you know, I kind of I kinda had to go like, I'm pretty sure I know where this came from. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And okay, Gretch, let's not go through cancer again. Let's let's process this. Mm-hmm. Let's get it done and be done with it, you know. But eighteen years of fear. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's where it came from. Um and and not that not that I needed to have a why. Why did this happen and who did it or whatever? But I needed to know like, I don't want to do this again. Yep. I don't want to feel these feelings that have caused this reaction in my body. Right. But you know it's interesting. So uh, we're uh, sitting together, sitting together when you were diagnosed. Um, where is the trauma? Well, where does the body experience the wound? Right. I think we have cellular memory. Our cells everywhere are oh, memory. Yeah. You know, it's our brain, right? Right. So right. you know, you look at that part of the body that was traumatized going through something, and if that part of you could speak, if that part of the body that's been injured or hurt could speak, mm. what would it say, honey? Well, right. that was in my reproductive organs. Right. And so when you say 18, 17 years of fear, 17, 18, yeah, long time, right there, okay? Yeah. Like that, the body held on to something for a long time. Disease is disease, Yeah. right? Yeah. And this is something you don't share, like you don't talk about that, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And fear is real. And the body, when, when you're fearful, again, there's a frozen, you're frozen, right? Yeah. And there, there's an immobility going on in your system, but there's and so the chi is off, the energy is off, the your your vibes off, and I think that's why you couldn't eat when you were stressed out, honey. Yeah, because you're yeah. you're you're locked up, you're frozen, you were just in survival literally for 17 years. And you know, I think um, <clears throat> when you when you get to a point, guys, that you you want to know. Why do I act a certain way or why do I feel a certain way? It's not it's not meant to drum up um, horrific, terrifying things that you've been through in the past. It's to recognize why I feel this way mm-hmm. and how do I make a shift? Mm-hmm. That's right. Well, and I think, again, our body is going to talk to us. Our body, cellular memory is there, you know. And I think what you um, were able to kind of process is eliminating that fear and, and when you when you match that mood to the trauma the physical trauma when you match that feeling to the trauma there seems to be kind of a, a healing energy that kind of takes over right because you're now allowing self-expression to happen you know 
when people go through a traumatic event or they're they're in a way frozen that moment of shock freezes people um, and there's a trauma for a long period of time when you can st- when you're out of the trauma it's almost like you start unthawing and you know and that kind of sounds weird but it just is like the tissue can fill out again and there's blood flow and there's there's movement there's energy there's there's warmth there's a heat you know it's almost like you can start letting some things move through you and you can process that and what's critical is that you allow that body to express itself um i think the part of your body that was traumatized was holding on to a lot of pain and a lot of suffering and the things that you endured and um you then in the moment of trauma some people can't process their trauma for years it mm-hmm. takes a long time mm-hmm. And when people will come to me and they'll say, my gosh, I just, I'm married, I'm happy, I'm, I'm in love or I'm single or I, I just got the best job ever. Why am I emotional? Why am I, I can't quit thinking about what happened to me. Why? Well, now you've got the bandwidth to handle it, sugar. Right. Like now you have right. the, you're safe. <clears throat> you're I'm, safe to finally talk about it, to finally express. And that has been a barrier, mm-hmm. honey, for mm-hmm. you. Okay. You know what? You're so right because for all those years I couldn't, can't speak I couldn't about. talk about it. Nope. I couldn't talk about it. Nope. Um, and, and you know, if you understand the anatomy and you understand that our cells do have their own brain, mm-hmm. y'all, they know what to do. And when you restrict and confine and you control what your body wants to do what it's what it's designed to do you know it's like i don't get in my car Mm -hmm. and then crawl underneath the hood and try to figure out how to do the engine it knows what to do yeah but um i was disturbing what it needed to do so thank goodness that Mm. you survived the beginning of the part of the cancer was i kind of stopped that cycle i for once put me first yep in that process of um I don't want to die. Yeah. Yep. And I'm not going to die. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'll tell you, um, when you when you have the possibility, yeah, that you might die, and you're not ready, or you you know. I'm still a mom. Kids have a lot of life left. It was like, that wasn't an option for me. No. And so my flight was, I'm not, I'm not going down that road because I, 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 I want to live and I want to live for my kids and I want to see my kids. And, and that's not an option. Like it just never, ever, you know, and I think to myself, why, why can't I do that in other areas of my life? Like that's not an option to feel that way, you know. Mm, I'm I'm upset mm. about that. That shouldn't be an option, but um, yeah. but I am thawing, and <clears throat> and I think that that I always say, and I tell Camille this, and really the title of my new book is my gift of cancer because of everything that I learned. Yeah, I I learned life lessons in less than a year that I've never experienced before. In my entire 58 years of living yeah you know and that uh, that's the best medicine i've ever received mm-hmm. yep and closer to heaven you were closer to heaven in so many ways you know yeah and again didn't the world just kind of stop and you got to really refocus on really what was the most important for you oh yeah, yeah. and not only what what was the most important but i was important yeah you you know, matter. when you're when mm-hmm. you're a single parent, you give so much of everything of you to yeah. who you're taking care of, yeah. you know. And maybe you're not a single parent, maybe you're a caretaker of family or whatever that might be. But all of a sudden it became like Gretchen, take care of you. Yeah. Like you have to. That's right. You love them so much you gotta take care of you. That's right. Thank God you did. Yeah. I'm so grateful you're here. Love you, sis. Love you. Yeah. So I this is um yeah, there were, this is something that you really have an inspirational um, ability now, and I've watched you talk to people, and I've watched you um, share your heart, share your story, and it's really where your heart is. Like this is really what matters to you the most, and so, you know, I want you to keep talking to you know the cancer, you know, you're doing the speeches you're doing, all the, the places you're you're talking, and the hope you're given, and you know the business you're building around the new wig stuff you got going on. <laughs> I'm so impressed with that. So. 
It's um, yeah. uh, the the cancer community is so near and dear to my heart, and it's not yeah. just people going through it, but it's the families, yeah, and it's the caretakers, it's everybody that's affected, yeah, you know, with with cancer, and um, there's there's a place for everybody, there's a space for everything, and if a little portion of what I learned and what I went through can be of help, then. Yeah. That misery is my ministry, as Camille has always said, forever. Yeah. And, you know, I I am a forever changed person the way I love myself, the way I honestly was surprised during cancer on how kind I was to myself. Mm. I've never spoken to myself that way. I like that. But I remember, you know, middle of the night getting up, getting sick, hitting the wall, and I'm like, girl... You're okay. Come on. I hate that. I'm not drunk. I'm just sick. (laughs) It's just like I get back in bed. I'm in so much pain. I just I would pull the covers over my head and just cry because I didn't want my kids in the next room to hear hear me. But you know, see, even we're so worried about that. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? It was like if you believe in you. Yeah. If you believe in that strength that lives in you that comes from Christ. Whoever you want it, that that yeah, spirit whatever to, deity. whatever yeah. that is to you, right? To me, it's Christ. But whatever it is to you, yeah. you know that power. You yeah. know that's a working power with you. You're never ever alone, and you can do this. Yeah, you know you can do this, and you can do this for your family members or friends who are going through this. Yeah, you can. You can be that support for them, and. You know, if you have a family member that, or a friend that's going through yeah. cancer, and they're in the woe part of it, they're in the um, this isn't fair and this sucks. Help redirect their thinking, because mm-hmm. it will matter how their bodies react. Yeah, it will. You know, if they dread, look, I'm here to tell you. I mean, chemo is not a walk in the park Mm-mm. by any means, Mm-mm. but. You know, I I looked at chemo as like, you are my friend. And there are many people in the world that don't ever get chemo. That's right. I get to get it. And it's right down the road. Yep. And thank you for being in my body. And if you kill my hair, I don't care. Yeah. I really don't care. You know, if I have to wear a Tina the rest of my life, I don't care. Yeah. You're bringing love to it. Do what you need to do. I welcome you. I'm not resisting you. Yeah. You have to be in my body for a reason. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to put my faith in you. Do what you need to do. Mm-hmm. And because the thing about chemo, it's not in you that long. Mm-mm. It does its job and it's done. Mm-hmm. At least, that's right. You know, so it's not It's not like it's going to stay in you for 10 years. Mm-mm. It's literally done, which is why, you know, in three months you go back and you have more. That's right. Kind of a thing. I don't even think it's three months. I think it's like six weeks. Short. Something Life like that. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty short. So. Well, I do feel like what you're figuring out and, and how you're helping people, um, I think this is maybe the reason why you got to get cancer, you yeah. know? Yeah. And I feel like this, uh, like cancer is no joke. And I feel like people need people that give them hope. And mm-hmm. you do that. So thank you for contributing to people. And keep talking, keep sharing your story. Thank you for being vulnerable. Yeah. And I love you, girl. I love you so much. You. And you know what, guys? Thank you for letting me share my heart. And, um, you know, this experience is is all here to help somebody else. And with a professional like Camille, like that's what we do. Yeah. Starting over is about helping uh, and starting over every day. So thank you so much for, for being a part of our community and yeah. for supporting us. And um, we just, we look forward to this every week. It's like 10, 15 on a Friday night here. <laughs> But that's what it's our, we do. Friday night fun. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and we're looking forward to making a difference in your life. And we, if we can be a contribution, we would look forward to doing that. So Absolutely. reach out, get a hold of us, and we've got a lot of things to offer. Thank you, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.